north of the Arctic Circle, in the Swedish city of Luleå, a quiet revolution is taking place. A revolution in the way steel is made. At the R&D headquarters of the Swedish National Mining Company, LKAB, scientists working with the world's only experimental blast furnace have developed and successfully tested a technology that cuts carbon dioxide emissions dramatically. The conventional blast furnace uses coal and it emits about two tons CO2 per ton per ton hot metal it's producing. And what we are doing is basically to remove that CO2 from the top gas and use it for technical purposes like soft drinks or detergents or store it in storage sites. As coal burns in the furnace, a mix of gases known as top gas are emitted. The new technology captures the carbon dioxide from the top gas for use elsewhere. It also reuses carbon monoxide and hydrogen present in the top gas as an energy source. As a result, the furnace requires 25% less coal than a normal blast furnace and can reduce emissions of carbon dioxide by up to 80%. This technology is a crucial development in one of the planet's most polluting industries. Steel is all around us, in the buildings we live in and in the vehicles we drive. And even something like your mobile phone that isn't made of steel is made using machines that are. So given then that the demand for steel is only likely to increase, the answer for the environment must be greener steel. The breakthrough technology LKAB has developed promises just that. The project has been financed by Alcos, a consortium of European companies committed to ultra-low CO2 steel making. The consortium has spent 75 million euros to date on developing the technology and will now spend a further 300 million for the project's first industrial scale trial at a French steelworks owned by ArcelorMittal, the largest steel company in the world. I think there is a lot of interest from the rest of the world and uh, I think it will be uh, transferred to, to uh, all those uh, global actors that are working around the world with iron making. So I think it will, it will firstly, of course, uh, take this first new step in this full-size blast furnace to, lead it, to demonstrate what we saw in the experimental blast furnace. And, and then it will, I think, will really take off. The technology is suitable for converting existing blast furnaces, but would cost around $200 million. Despite that price tag, many European steelmakers are seriously considering it, including LKAB's neighbour, SSAB. They already have one of the lowest rates of coal consumption and emissions in the world. They emit 5% less CO2 than the European average, and almost 20% less than the global average. But they still say this technology could cut their emissions in half. The environmental uh, uh, advantages are of course huge. You can, if you can cut the CO2 in half, that's, that's a very big thing for our climate. Uh, and that is, that is the, the main, main thing, I think, with this process. Uh, secondly, uh, the, the cost for coal is a, a big part of, of the cost for making steel. 15 to 20 percent to be exact, and the price of coal has more than doubled in the past seven years. So any technology that cuts the coal requirement is instantly attractive. A further incentive for the Europeans is that they will soon be taxed on their carbon emissions. After 2013, uh, if you, as a steelmaker, if you're not among the 10 percent best performers, you will have to pay for emission allowances for your emissions. And additionally, if you want to increase your production above historical levels, then you have to pay perhaps up to 30 euros per each tonne of CO2. And larger steelmakers pump out millions of tonnes of CO2 every year. Japanese steelmakers are also interested in this technology, as they're coming under pressure from their new government's vehement commitment to cutting Japan's emissions. But even the EU and Japan combined, as the world's second and third largest steel producers, don't produce as much as China, with over a third of global steel production, and responsible for half of all steelmaking related CO2 emissions. So a fundamental question is whether the Chinese will adopt this technology. Uh, I think the government need to put some measures in place to incentivize the, the interest in reductions. 
and so far we haven't seen any any real commitments from China and perhaps the reason for that is that uh, they don't want to put any caps on the total production of steel which is uh, needed for their development. For now it's still early days. It will take a few more years and clear proof that the technology can produce the same reductions on an industrial scale before commercial rollout. But the roadmap is drawn to a future where our cars, homes and electrical appliances are made with greener steel.